When a person chas v'shalom does an avera, there's a chain reaction what happens. The first thing that happens is that he did the opposite of Hashem's will. Aside, epech ratzon Hashem. The king told you to do this and you didn't do it. The king told you not to do this and you did. That's the first thing that happens, which in itself is a big thing. Worse than that, the second the person does this sin, he creates this blemish on this levush. Now if the sin is small, then the blemish is small. If the sin is big, the blemish is big. If the sin is severe, the levush gets torn. And if the sin continues over and over and over, it's another sin, another sin, another blemish, another blemish. And the person has to do tshuva and wipe off this sin. If chas v'shalom, the sins are severe, even tshuva, even Yom Kippur doesn't really help. He has to go through Yisurim and there's a whole process the Gemara explains. If the person is lucky, he does it in this world. If he's not lucky, then Hashem has to deal with it up there. The next thing that happens, the Gemara explains that when a person does an Avera, right away he creates a Malach, an angel. Malach Chabala, a destructive angel that comes and stands next to him. It's called a Mashchit, and he comes to annoy him all day long, till he kills him. So if a person did a hundred Averot, he has a hundred Malachim around him, all day long annoying him. All day long. So he gets a ticket. And he gets in a car accident. And he fails years. And loses money. And every little thing. They're standing around him. Annoying him. Till he kills them. Huh? With tshuva? Tshuva and masim tovim. As a, we can get into that later. How do you kill it? But yeah, tshuva kills them off. The next thing that happens, Kabbalah explains that you create chas v'shalom when a person does an avera, what's called a klipa. This spiritual spiritual uh, bacteria, this germ, the spiritual germ, exactly like you have a germ that comes and attacks the body and it has uh, a disease, this is like a spiritual bacteria. Be and worse above all that, is that the second that person did an avera, he created a blemish in all the spiritual worlds. Like he, this kera, this thorn, all around the world, all the universe. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Imagine there's a, a, a famous picture in a big museum somewhere in Europe that the picture is worth half a billion dollars and everybody comes all around the world to see this beautiful picture that somebody 300 years ago took a bunch of paints, threw it at the canvas, made like this, and everybody comes to marvel this beautiful picture. Now imagine somebody walks into this museum with a bucket of black paint and throws it at the picture and ruins the picture completely. So what happens? First of all, he gets arrested. Then he goes to jail. Then he has to pay a fine. But this is his issues corresponding to the person's issues. He has to do tshuva. The neshama has to go to Geron, chas v'shalom. But worse than all that, he ruined the picture. Nobody can enjoy this picture ever again. Not one person in the universe can come to this museum and enjoy this picture. He ruined it for everybody and it's irreversible. And that's the spiritual blemish. So when a person does an avera, Forget about his own consequences. He makes this blemish in the universe that hurts everybody. So a lot of people say, ah, leave me alone, I'll deal with it when I get there. It's my problem. No, it's not your problem. It's everybody's problem. Because if I chas v'shalom do an avera, everybody suffers. And if I do on the other way a mitzvah, ah, oh, everybody benefits. Every mitzvah that I do, every mitzvah that you do, the entire universe benefits. If people around the world will see what happens to the world when we do a mitzvah, everybody would worship us. But at this point, it's not like that. But right now, if a person, chas v'shalom, does the opposite, avera, he messes it up for everybody. All the neshamot suffer from that. The world suffer from that. He brings tzaros to the, to the world. And that's what they showed me. Here is told, ah, we don't care about the stealing. Look what you did here. Here you cheated in business. Okay, but look what you did here. There's no words to describe it. Because there was so much of it. And at some point they were telling me, okay, Habibi, <laughs> you're like a lost case. You have nothing here, okay? You know, so let's see what we can put together. So when you were eight days old, your parents didn't really ask my permission, but they circumcised me. So they told me, even though it's not even your mitzvah, it's your father's mitzvah, but we'll give you a mitzvah for this one. And when you're a bar mitzvah, you put filin on, so we'll give you another mitzvah. Even though you really didn't care about the mitzvah. 
And one time a dollar fell out of your pocket and somebody hungry picked it up and ate. So we'll give you tzaka for this one. And one time you helped your mom and one time you were good to this person and one time you did this and they were like trying to, to gather some mitzvot together and they told me like, there's nothing. There's nothing to work with even. Mainly you have like, you know, 50-50, we can do something with it. But you have like 99.9999999 and nothing. So they're kind of telling me, look, you're like a lost case. We have nothing to do with you. 